Okay, welcome back to creating a cryptocurrency in Python. This is part five now. In this video, we'll look at uh, using render templates and HTML files to sort our web design and maybe start our registration, login, user management stuff. Okay, so I think in the last video, we left off with just returning hello world in our app. So if I run it here, Go over to my browser and go localhost. Right now we have hello world being returned here. And we can actually return HTML here. So we can return hello world as an HTML tag like that. And if I refresh here, you see now we have our proper header. And my Siri is activated again. I guess when I say hello world or something, it just activates it like that. All right. <laughs> So uh, obviously we don't want to return a whole crap load of HTML file in our return statement here. So what we can actually do is we can utilize this render template and we can return a render template of an HTML file. So let's do that and let's create an, an HTML file called index.html and we'll return that file. So to do that, Flask, uh, Flask looks in a folder called templates. So we have to create that folder, lowercase templates, inside of our main directory. And then inside of there, we can put the file index.html. And now inside of uh, index.html, I'll just code some simple HTML, um, HTML stuff here. So our document type is HTML. We'll open up an HTML file with the language English. Um, we'll make a simple header here and we'll store our title, which should be the name of your cryptocurrency. So I've called mine Shockwave and you can call yours whatever you please. So that's our header there. Then underneath, uh, I'll just do a simple shockwave title. And then I'll do a link that we'll use in the future to log in or register. So I'll make that a list item like a bullet. And I'll just add an href for slash login. And with the title login, and that list item and then I'll just copy and paste that again for register and we'll make these links actually work in the future and also probably provide some CSS code or something to make the uh, website look a little bit nicer for you guys but just for the tutorial I'm going to make it kind of like the bare bones uh, sort of boring layout for the HTML and not really do anything crazy so that's our file there and I'm just gonna save it so we can refresh and there we go so now we have our index.html file being loaded being returned by this render template right here and now we have these links and these links don't work yet but they do take to slash login and slash register so we will make them work so um, yeah let's start with cleaning up our um, MySQL system here. Because in Python, in order to run MySQL, it is a bit messy. So the, um, the problem is Python um, makes you type in MySQL text and uh, it, it's, it, yeah, it's pretty messy. So you, you end up having to open up a cursor like mysql.connection.cursor and then running execute using commit uh, function and then closing the cursor for every time that you want to like read a piece of data from your database, add a piece of data, etc. So for this project, what we'll do is we're actually going to create a way of really, really simplifying that process. And we'll do it in a file called, um, let's say, sqlhelpers.py. So then we can define what a MySQL table will look like. But first, let's import um, the MySQL instance from the main file or the app file, I should say. And then we're going to define a MySQL table. 
And uh, when we initialize this table, so our dunder init function, we'll have to provide the name of the table and um, we'll also need the columns that are in the table. So for example, our um, blockchain or our users, we'll have to create a users table. So let's do that actually before I start here. So let's run MySQL. I'll have to kill all MySQL D, MySQL D underscore safe. And then I'll have to do mysql.server start. And then mysql-u root-p, enter my password. And then let's do use crypto. And then let's create a table for our users. So create table users. And then inside of that, we're going to want to store um, the name of the user. So um, we'll say name varchar30, um, the username. We'll also make that 30. Uh, and then the email. Let's make that 50 and the password of the user. And we'll leave room for the hash, so I'll make that 100. Okay, so now we've made our users table. So these are gonna be our columns of the table, name, username, email, and password. So I think we should also um, provide that information when we initialize it. So we'll put that in the args of the function. Okay, so then from there, we're going to assign these variables to the class. So self.table equals table name and self.columns will be um, a list. So say, say that we, as an example, because this might be a bit confusing, we want to initialize the table users so we can access easy. So we'll do users equals table and then it's called users. So that's our table name. And then the column names would be separated in the um, in the method like this. So they would be uh, name, um, what we just created, basically name, username, email, and password. And then we're going to have these stored in the args, but we ultimately want to um, call them in one line, kind of like we did here, where they were they were just in brackets separated by a comma. So I'm going to assign the columns like that. So basically I want the columns to look like this. I want it to look like users, name, username, email, password. Sorry, not users, just like that. And so the way we'll get it to be formatted like that for any length of uh, arguments is we'll do a join function. So we'll do a comma dot join, no, sorry, a um, bracket percent, percent s, and then percent comma dot join args. like that. Okay, and that should work pretty well. Then we also want something to check that this table exists in the first place. So we're gonna create an is new table function. So does this table exist or are we creating it when we initialize it here? So what we'll do is we'll say is new table and table name will be the argument of that. And then if it's not a new table, or if it is a new table, we're going to create it. So we're going to have to create our cursor for our MySQL. And then we're going to execute create table percent %s, percent %s. And then we're going to have to pass in the table and the columns into that. So it's going to be percent self.table 
and self.columns. And then we're going to close our cursor. Just like that. Cool. And actually we forgot to commit, so we have to, um, oh no, we, we don't have to commit because we created a table here. But what we do need to do is define this is new table function. And we're gonna make that fairly simple. It's just going to attempt to read from the table and if it throws an error or an exception, then we'll know that that table does not exist. So if we create our cursor again, and then we're going to try and access some arbitrary data from that table. So let's select all from percent %s, and that will be the table name. And then we'll close the cursor. And if that goes wrong and an error is thrown because the table does not exist, then we will accept that exception and we will return true because it is a new table. And then if this does not throw an error, we know that the table exists. So in that case, we will return false. And that is our new table function, which should work very well. Then I'm just going to add a bunch of other functions here, which I will provide the code for. I'm not going to bore you, but I want to define a function to get all values from the table. And I'm going to sort of speed that up as I code this. And then I also want to define a value to get one value based on a search value from the table. So just to get one piece of information or one row, one dictionary from the table. So say uh, I wanted to get, I, I had the username Will and I wanted to get the password from Will. So um, here I can use the search value and find that entire row from the table and I want to return that in this function. Then I also want to define deleting one so we can easily delete a row based on a search value as well. And I'll pass that. And then I'm going to define drop so we can just delete the table entirely. And then the other thing is I'm going to define an insert into the table so we can insert data into the table when this will be the most complicated function here. So I'm going to code these now and I'll get back to you. The code will be provided in the link below in the description. Okay, so now uh, I've finished coding up the SQL helpers file, which you have hopefully downloaded at this point in time because we will not really be coming back to it for a while. Um, it will just kind of provide the basis for us um, accessing our data from MySQL. So um, at this point, we'll look at our app file again, and we'll start to code the login and the register pages in the next video. So I'll see you then.